All right, welcome back to logging in Python. I made a video before. Uh, if you didn't watch that one, this is like part two. So go ahead and check that one out. I'll try to link it in the description if I can remember. That's the uh, caveat there. And if you like this kind of content, feel free to subscribe. That way you don't miss any potentially useful content in the future. Um, this channel is just me sharing what I've learned along the way and us kind of learning together. So yeah, would be much appreciated. You guys have been really supportive recently. And uh, I just, I do, I appreciate it. So uh, yeah, let's go back into logging with Python. By the way, we're going to continue to pretty much follow this article. Uh, I'll also link this down below. And in the last video, we talked about severity levels and we also talked about how to log to a file. So just a refresher, here we have the level of our logging to logging dot info. So anything info and above will be logged. Anything below info, will not be logged. And so there's a few things I wanted to show in this particular video. One is how do we add a line number to our message? How do we create our own logger? Because if you remember in the last video, we showed that root was the name of our logger by default. So what if we wanna create our own logger, give it some kind of name, and then we can have multiple loggers maybe doing multiple things if that's what you're looking for. And then lastly, I wanted to show how you can use this in the real world. We're gonna have a try catch block and make it write a log. So hopefully that'll all be useful. And let's just start off with how do we add a line number to our message? So if we look over here in the basic config of our logging, uh, we can see the format. We gave it a time, which is of type string, uh, a level name, which is string, and a message, which is string. But what if we also want to add, because if we do debug at least, we're probably going to have a lot of log messages. So if we want to go back to where the log message occurred, we can show what was the line number that the log message was written at, and that will help us get closer to where the error actually occurred. So to do that, I'm just going to add another colon in our format, and then let's do uh, the percentage, and inside the parentheses, line no. And instead of string, like the rest, this is gonna be a D for decimal, because this is numeric. So now let's save, bring up our console, and run this again. So we run it, Let's go take a look at it. And here we go, the line number that this occurred. So if I wanna go back to the code and see where was this log message written, uh, line 12. So if we look at line 12, yeah, that's when the warning was written. Line 14 was the info. That's why we see 14 here, perfect. Another thing I don't really like is the format of this date. At least here in America, I'm used to month, day, year. And then I don't care about this precision here in the seconds. This really does me no good. So if we want to format the time because we gave it the time here in the log message, there's another thing we can add to this configuration and it's called date format. And in here we can give it the formatting. So in our case, I want it to be percentage M dash percentage D for day and then dash percentage Y for year. And then we'll do a space and then the hour. So percentage H, percentage capital M for minute and then colon percentage S for second. So I think this will look as I expect. Let's check it and find out. So I'll run it again. And now we get 9, 14, 20, 22. And we have the hour um, military time. So I wonder if I change this to lowercase h and run it. No. <laughs> it's not capital H like I expect. It's actually capital I to go from zero to 12. And then we might as well add a PM or AM to this. So let me add that too. So we can do space uh, percentage lowercase p for PM or AM. And let's run this and now take a look. So yes, we have 9, 14, 20, 22 at 5, 1, 44 PM. That's what time it is. So now I think this message is perfect. And then the next question is, what if we want to create our own logger? We don't want to use the root one. We want to create one with our own name. So maybe right here, I can also add to the message the name of our logger. So percentage in the parentheses name, it's also a string. And just to reiterate, if we run this and we look, root is going to be the name of our logger by default. So what if we want to create our own logger, give it a name? What we can do, so I'm gonna create a variable called logger or an object, and it's gonna be equal to logging dot get 
logger. And here we can pass in a name. So test logger is what I'm going to name it. And then down below, instead of logging.warning, logging.debug, logging.info, we can do logger.warning, logger.debug, and logger.info. And if I run this, we see it's now called test logger, the name that I gave it. So I guess you might want to do this if you want to log different things with different names. Okay, so lastly, I want to show you how you can use this with exceptions and try catch blocks or try accept blocks in Python. So let's actually delete the log file because it's got a bunch of stuff now that we don't really need. So I'll move it to recycle bin. And then down below here, in between the logger and us writing to the logger, let's do a try block. Let's say we're gonna have some user input in this example. And we're going to add that user input to a number. Let's say we ask them for their age and then for some reason we're gonna add a number to that. Okay, so I'm gonna make a variable called user input and that's gonna be equal to, and let's say they give us a string by accident or maybe on purpose, I don't know. And they write test. And so below, what we wanna do is create a new variable called new input, and that's gonna be equal to user input. You, there we go, user input plus three, because for some reason that's what we wanna do. We wanna add three to the number they give us. And then we want to print out that new input. But this should give an error, right? Because we're trying to add three, not the string three, not the character, you know, three like this, we're trying to add the number three to the string text. And that should throw an exception. And then down here in the accept block, we can write to our logger what the value of user input was. So then when we're debugging this, we can say, oh, you know, it erred because you put in this. So let's take out all of this stuff. And then the accept, let's do logger dot error. And I'm going to do an F string. So F in front of our string, user entered, and then here we can put what the user entered, so user input. And now if we run this, let's see what happens. We get a log message that says error, which is the type that we gave it. Um, here's the name, here's the time, here's our message, user entered test, and it says it happened at line 23, or rather it was written to log at line 23. And this only ran because an exception occurred in this try block and then this happened. If nothing were to occur, like if I were to just put a regular number here, like two, right? And I'll save and run that again. We'll see that nothing will get added to this log file because this wasn't an error. Nothing occurred for this exception to be thrown. And down here, it printed the number two. So we know it made it this far. But anyway, just wanted to show you an example of how you can use this in the real world. Um, hopefully you found these videos useful and I hope to see you in a future video. Take care.